Hi, welcome to today's Pilates with assisted modifications. I'm going to show you how to either use one of these resistance loops that's a little bit stretchy, or even just a basic towel that you might have around the house to um, assist you with some of the moves, and you also have the option of not using anything at all. We're gonna start how I very traditionally start my Pilates classes, which is taking care of your feet. So take um, like a, a lacrosse ball is great, a tennis ball, something along those lines, and place it on the floor just underneath your foot. Spread your toes nice and wide and start with just sort of a little press and release. As you press down into that, what you wanna do is push hard enough that the metatarsals, the bones across the top of your foot kind of spread apart and stretch out sort of that opposite of the compression that a shoe does on your foot through the day. Then press down and hold, and imagine you're grabbing it like you're making a fist, and then open your toes towards the ceiling wide as you can. Do that three more times. When you grab it like a fist, it's almost like your toes or fingers, and you're gonna pick that ball up off the floor with your toes. One last time, do that for me. And then just press as hard as you can. Take one super deep breath, and then release that and just kind of massage it out for four. And then bring that to a stop. Starting right in the middle of the arch, I want you to start at the ball of the foot, roll through that arch, all the way back by the heel crease of your foot, and then right back up through the center of that arch towards the ball of the foot. And then do me a favor and move that towards the end step. So kind of right underneath the big toe, roll through the arch so it goes right back towards the heel. And then same idea, right there on that end step, roll it right back up nice and slow. And then this time move it to the outside of that arch, right by where the pinky toe is, roll all the way through. As soon as you get right back by the heel crease, roll that right back up. And then just four times kind of roll through that. Think of like a rolling pin. Nice, smooth, even pressure all the way through that foot. And one, and then pick one spot. So as you're rolling, kind of pay attention. Is there a spot that's kind of tighter than the others? And then it's like when somebody's giving you a massage and they find that little tight spot and they kind of push their thumb into it, like a little trigger point to make it release. Now on your next exhale, blow all the air out slowly. Feel like you're releasing your foot and not fighting against that little place where you're pressing and let it kind of release a little more. And then again, just massage that out. So a little fast back and forth motions, as much pressure as you can stand. And then release that and put it right up underneath your heel. So the ball that I'm using for this today, I will go back and really try and find it on Amazon for you. It has all these little, I don't know, bumps on it so that whenever you're using it to um, roll through your heel or your foot, it just gives that little extra massage because of all those little bumps. It looks a little bit like one of those little dryer balls that you would put in instead of a dryer sheet. Two more, and one. Move the ball far enough out of the way that you're not gonna step on it. Before you do the other foot, I just want you to inhale your arms up, and then exhale, swan dive forward. See if you feel any difference as you start to stretch through one side or the other. Tuck your belly button into your spine. Roll your back all the way up to standing. Now the foot, probably your right foot that you were using on the ball, shift that foot back into a lunge. Drive your heel down into the floor. Shift your weight just a little bit into that front foot so that there's a super stretch through your calf and Achilles tendon. Good. Lift your arms up overhead and shift your weight back just a little bit. So now the stretch moves forward into that hip flexor. And then grab onto that right wrist and pull it away from that back leg's hip so that you're getting the stretch down into the outside part of the hip and then bring that up and shake that out. Good, switch right over to the other side. So spread your toes nice and wide and just press and release right there. Press really hard, spread your toes really wide and kind of push hard enough that you need that kind of release to take off of it. Two more times. 
and then press and hold with sort of a medium pressure as you give me that little fist with your toes and then open them really wide. So just kind of squeeze and open. Two more, just like that. And then give me that kind of quick rubbing back and forth, just a little massage through the ball of the foot. For two more counts. And then roll right through the arch. So on these first three rolls, make them super slow. Put as much pressure as you can stand. Find all those little spots through that arch that you're like, oh my goodness, it's so tight right there. And then roll it right back up. And then move it to the inside part of the foot or right underneath the big toe and really get into that instep. Same thing, just as much pressure as you can stand. Roll through. Really slow, get back by the heel crease or the heel and then slowly start to roll right back up till you get almost underneath that big toe. And then switch it to the outside of the foot. Side note, if you have a headache, rumor has it that if you will push right underneath the crease of the big toe with a little ball like this, or have somebody else push for you if you have a headache, it can help relieve a headache. All right, give me those four smooth rolls like you're using a rolling pin. So try not to be too easy on yourself here. But really put some pressure into that ball and search for the tight spots. And then pick one of those and push as much as you can take. Think about your breathing as you're doing this. So instead of kind of tightening that foot against the ball so that it pulls away, it kind of relaxes and really presses down into that ball. And then just like in the ball of the foot, massage it out nice and fast. Four, three, that part should feel really good. And then just move it up underneath the heel. When you have it underneath the heel, our heels tend to be pretty tough. So you might find that you have to move it a little bit forward so it goes more towards your Achilles tendon, or you have to move the heel back on the ball a little bit so that it is closer to the arch. Just kind of play with that. Good. And then roll that ball out of the way. Inhale your arms up overhead. Exhale, same thing, sort of swan dive forward. So this time there shouldn't be much difference from one side to the other. Kind of shift your hips side to side. Tuck your belly button into your spine, roll your back all the way up. And then give me that same little stretch. So this one's probably your left leg. Shift it back into that lunge. Press your heel as close to the floor as you can so that it's trying to glue itself down to the floor. Shift your weight into this front leg so the stretch in your calf and Achilles tendon is super deep. From that position, just shift your hands up overhead as much as you can, getting it right up here into that hip flexor. And then with your right hand, grab that left wrist and pull away from that left hip, that back leg. And then bring that all the way up and step it in. Good, shaking out your legs. Just a nice little warm up to kind of get the blood flowing in a very gentle, silk massaging good for your body sort of way. So coming all the way down onto the mat for me, I want you to go ahead and be sure that you have that towel or loop nearby. And I'm gonna just keep switching between equipment so whichever one that you have, you can use. So don't feel like you have to grab the one that I grab. If you have a loop, grab the loop. Wrap whatever you have around the balls of your feet, hold on to it with your arms, and slowly start to see curl your spine. So you're gonna think about tucking your belly button in scooping your chin towards your chest, but you're keeping your airway open. So you're keeping this little space right here between your chin and your chest. And as you start to roll down, start to slide those heels in towards you as much as you need. And then when you get all the way down, pull your knees all the way in towards your chest, lay your head and shoulders down, release through your back. Push your feet into the towel or loop, scoop your belly button into your spine and let that kind of pull you all the way up to a seated position. Good. Now I'm going to do it with the loop. If you have the towel, keep the towel right there. Grab onto it. C curl first. Lean back as far as you can when you need to start sliding those heels in. When you need to lift the heels off. On your rolling back, you're going to come all the way down, knees into the chest. Nice little back stretch. 
chin into your chest, push your feet into that labor towel and bring yourself up to a nice seated position. Good, keeping with that movement. I know that there is a lot to think about as you're super scooping your belly button in towards your spine. You're thinking about making the letter C with your spine, so really tucking your chin in towards your chest and curling that back so that it's not a flat back. What you want to protect against is you don't want to go straight back to where when you get to a certain point, you kind of plop down on the floor, which is not good for your spine at all. But making it the smoothest little roll down and roll up that you can. We're going to do four more. If you would rather not use the equipment, simply roll back, lift the arms overhead, drag the heels in, scoop the knees in towards your chest, drop the heels down, then start the roll. So whether you're using the towel or the loop or you're using nothing at all, just really think about making it the longest, slowest little move that you can. And then bringing yourself all the way back up to seated. Good. Go ahead and give me two more wherever you are. Really think about that breathing. If you're not using that equipment, give me that just millisecond of I'm just using my legs and not using the upper body. And then plant those heels into the floor hard as you can so they don't come up and float. And it's all abdominal and back muscles that are taking you down and picking you back up. It can be a temptation without that to sort of let the weight of the legs pull you up. And I would love it if you would kind of fight against that, drive the heels in and make it just abs and back that bring you up. Okay, go ahead and grab on. Be sure that equipment is close by and bring yourself all the way flat on the mat for leg circles. So plant one foot on the floor for me. Take the opposite leg and wrap your towel or your loop around that leg and start to straighten it as much as your leg's going to allow you to straighten that knee. A slight bend is completely acceptable. With the opposite hand, I want you to grab on to whatever equipment you're using and I want you to slowly start drawing circles for me. Press your heel away, swing out to the side and come up over your knees. Drive your heel away, swing out and come back in. So as you're doing these little circles, think about your belly button and your lower back being really heavy towards the floor. And as you circle, there's no weight shift in your hips. So your right hip and your left hip are both pressing evenly into the floor the entire time. And there's a couple of ways for you to use this equipment, whether you have the towel or the loop, pulling on it with that arm super hard so that there's a little bit of a resistance is a great way to use it. You can also use it where when you come up over your nose, you give just that little extra tug. So you do a leg circle and stretch. Go ahead and bring that to a stop and just switch directions for me. So bring it towards you to stretch, swing out to the side and away. Towards you to stretch, out to the side and away. And just like we were talking about with the last exercise, if you have a preference for not using any equipment on these, then you just circle and bring it back in without the equipment. Nice. Keep that focus on your hips. Really drive the foot of that bent knee in and down towards the floor so that as you're doing this, the back of that leg is working and it's helping to keep everything stabilized that's sitting on the mat. Last one right there. And just switch right over to the other side. Bend that knee, place the foot flat on the mat. Lengthen that foot in the air. Bend your knee as much as you need to wrap the towel or band around. And again, at whatever point your leg is willing to go today to straighten it, grab it with the opposite hand, press into your equipment, and then pull it towards you. So your towel or loop is being pressed into. Create that resistance by just squeezing nice and hard with your arm. Bend your hand and circle by driving your heel away from you, swing out to the side and pull it up overhead. And then remember, you always have the option of using that equipment at the top 
just to give you that little extra stretch so that you're doing an exercise that is going to strengthen as well as create flexibility at the same time. Good. After your next one, go ahead and reverse that for me. So pull it as close to you as you can and then open out to the side and circle. Pull it in and open out to the side and circle. Pull and open out to the side and circle. Pull. Keep that focus right here in the center of the body so that there isn't any rocking side to side, but by the squeezing of everything in your core, you're just keeping everything under control. Go ahead and give me one more. Drive that supporting foot in and down, and then a little tug. Good. Using the loop or the towel, place it across both feet. Lengthen them as much as you can. Again, keep whatever bend in your knees that you need. And just point your toes into that and flex your feet. So point your toes, just sort of working through the feet, the calves, and the shins. If you don't have anything, just really articulate. So start to point, push all the way through the end of the toes, pull them back, and flex and push out through the heels. Or if you're using a towel, same idea. Press into it and really flex. Just give me two more wherever you are. Last one. And then bend those knees nice and close in towards your chest. Good. Right there, we're going to work on what's sort of a combination between a double leg stretch and a teaser. So as you start to push those feet away, scoop your chin in towards your chest and just start to straighten those legs as much as your back is going to allow. Tuck your belly button into your spine and lay it all the way flat for me. Press into that. Really lift through your shoulders and sink all the way in and back. Same idea if you're using that loop. Press into it. Keep probably about half of your back. So from the lower back up through just below your shoulder blades and back down as we said with the other exercises if you would rather you can just lift and tuck in but after using the equipment for a second it kind of gives you that super feeling of okay this is how lifted i need to get in my upper body to really get into those abdominals and on the last four if you would rather you can lift all the way up to a balanced v sit and then tuck the knees in and set that back down. Remember, just because we're not picking up heavier weights doesn't mean that you can't create something that is too heavy for your body to do today. Could be because you didn't sleep well, it could be how much you ate, could be hormones, could be a lot of different things. So if you try one of these and you're like, I can't do that today, it's okay. Just switch and do a different move where you're just pushing in and lifting and then bringing yourself right back down. Good. Releasing that, grabbing onto one or both knees, pull yourself all the way up to a seated position. Good. Wrapping something around your feet and grabbing onto it, so a towel or a loop. Tuck your belly button into your spine and just give me sort of a half back Pull as hard as you can with those hands so you get a nice stretch to your shoulders. And then roll your shoulders up and back like you're tucking your shoulder blades into your back pockets. So articulate through the spine, scoop the belly button in, sit up tall, lengthen through the spine. Tuck in and back. And lift tall. One more, tuck in and back. And lift tall. Now take whatever equipment you're using off of your feet. So if it's the towel, I want you to grab nice and close together so that you have plenty of space on either side of that towel. And I want you to find that scooped, rolled back position. So as soon as you get far enough back that you go, okay, my abs got tight, that's as far as you want to go. You don't want to keep pushing so far back that your belly button starts to push out or you start to lose control in the center. And then just row the arms and release. 
So keep the elbows nice and high, like their shoulder height, and pull on that towel like you're gonna tear it in half. Or if it's that loop, create that little extra stretch and up, staying in that sort of half seated back. So every time you pull with those arms back, it should get just a little tighter, maybe a little shake in the abdominal wall. Last one, good. Stay there or come up for a little break. Twist to the side, bicep curl, come through center. Twist to the other side, bicep curl. So if you set up for a little break, come back with this, give me a little half roll back, twist. Bicep curl, extend, go through center. Twist, bicep curl, extend, go through center. Twist, bicep curl, extend, through center. Twist, so we're only gonna do four sets of these. Well, five if you did the first one. And that was two, so you just have two more. So really scoop that belly button in towards your spine. Think about doing sort of a little kegel squeeze and internal tightening. Do what I like to call a brace, where you kind of press into those abdominals just enough that you really feel that extra tightening. Twist. Okay, I lost count. So we're doing one more. But I think it's right. Oh yeah. Twist, bicep curl, extend, center, and sit all the way up. Nice. The only difference on this next one is you're going to straighten those legs out so you're in a sort of a seated L. I want you to kind of imagine there's a wall behind your back and you're leaning against that wall. So to prevent any of this sort of curling forward and releasing, I want you to feel like someone tied a string to the top of your head hold you just a little bit taller, and then just slightly lean back against that wall for me. Again, I'm gonna start with the loop. Place both hands into it and your palms forward. And I want you to feel like you're kind of doing a push-up. So feel like there's a chest press. It's not gonna come quite as high on the elbow as you did on that row. Bring it in and press. Same idea on the towel. Bring it in and press, but really kind of Hook it on your thumbs. Go ahead and press your fingertips to the ceiling and just push your palms straight forward out in front of you. Give me two more like that. Inhale and exhale. On this one, I want you to bring it in. Lift it up overhead. As you do so, I want you to give me a hinged forward fold. So as far as you can go without collapsing into your back, Pull those arms in like that little row and lift overhead. Scoop the belly button in as you hinge forward. Drag the arms in towards your chest. Up and over. So originally a lot of the work was pressing out like a push-up. And now a lot of the work on the arms is this sort of scoop or drag in, press overhead and then hinge forward. Good. Same thing, your hands would just be right inside of that loop. Lift up and forward. Pull it in. Press overhead. Now on these last three, instead of just kind of leaning against that wall, see if you can't kind of look up to the ceiling and scoop in. Belly button into the spine. Little kegel squeeze. Nice, tight, bracing through the abs. Two more. So just something as small as changing your eye gaze from in front of you to looking up to the ceiling can make it feel just a little bit heavier. Nice job, and release. Go ahead and make sure you have that equipment close by to where your hips are as you roll yourself all the way back and down one more time. Good. Starting with one foot lifted, I'm gonna start with no equipment for you. It's a single leg bridge. If you know that you already have super tight hamstrings and single leg bridge causes you to cramp or it just doesn't work for your body, then go into a double leg bridge. 
because we're just doing the lift and lower repeatedly. And you can certainly do that with both feet on the floor. Otherwise, place the labor towel around your foot right across the arch where your shoelaces would be on the other side. Bend the knee as much as you need so that you can grab onto it with the opposite hand. Good. And slowly start to lift. And as gentle as you can, start to set it down. Don't quite touch and come back up. So kind of imagine for me that there's an eggshell on the floor right underneath your hips. And so as you start to set it down, you need to be super gentle and tap that eggshell and lift without breaking it. If you need more, give a little extra tug on whatever equipment it is you're using. Same idea on that towel as you lift. And lower down. Lift, give a little pull so you have to kind of fight against it. And lower down. You have two like that, lift. And lower. One more, lift. Lower, so if both feet are on the floor, give yourself a little breather, lower your hips all the way down. Take a deep breath. If you need to adjust anything, moving your feet out or in to make it a little bit harder or to make it work better for your body, do so. And if you are using the equipment, switch it to the other foot and the other hand. And lift up, pressing into that. Gentle, start to touch, don't quite, and come right back up. So remember, whatever it is that you're using, you always have that option of giving that little extra tug on it, which gives you two areas of work, your arm, as well as the back of that supporting leg that's trying to push and lift you up towards the ceiling. I feel like that top leg, you're really pushing that heel just right up to the ceiling, even if your knee is bent. Like you're just gonna tap that heel straight above you on the ceiling. Give me three more wherever you are. How hard can you pull on that towel or loop to make yourself work? Sorry, two more. I switched hands, didn't I? One more. And lower down. And release that. Good from that bridge position. Just roll yourself right over onto your side. Go ahead and tuck both legs into the loop if you have it. If you've been using the towel, just set it over to the side, or if you would like, you could even roll it up and use it like a little pillow. Good. I want you to lengthen both legs out nice and straight and just lift the top leg up. So you're going to kind of imagine there's a super low table down there, like a little tea table, and you want to stay just above the top of that table as you swing your leg forward and swing your leg back. So try not to let there be any point where you kind of shift and roll those hips and start lifting that leg, but maybe even put your hand on that top hip and have that feeling that that hip isn't going anywhere. If it works better for you, place that hand on the floor and swing that leg back. As you're doing it, see if you can't create this little space right here between the floor and your obliques or your rib cage on the bottom. Good, swinging forward and squeeze and swing back. You have four more of those nice and slow. So there is a whole lot of work through the abdominals and back muscles, just holding everything still as that leg is swinging forward and back. And then there's obviously also the squeeze on the outside of that top hip as you're swinging forward and back. Two more. And squeeze. Squeeze, pull your belly button in and back. Imagine somebody cute just came behind you and they wrap their hand around you. You don't want them to grab a pool of hey, hey, right there. And forward and stop right in the center. Just lift and lower. So try not to make this a kick, but instead make it a very purposeful lift and lower. Squeeze with the muscles. And lower, when we kick, we start to use momentum, which can sometimes feel easier, but it's not gonna develop the same muscle work. And release. Now when you release, remember you're not coming all the way to that bottom foot for three. Lift. Two, you are almost there. Lift. 
and then toss the little bitty circles. Eight. Stop this hip from moving for four, three. Stop at the top of that circle and draw those circles in the opposite direction. Still scooping this up off of the mat, staying nice and still through the center. Two and one. Take your top leg and bend the knee slightly and just place it down towards the front of the mat so that you can lift the bottom leg and lower. So it's just a little bitty inner thigh lift and lower, lift and lower. Think about where you're working so that you don't start to adjust and shift everything forward and back, but instead think about squeezing the inner thigh and releasing. Squeeze the inner thigh. Just give me two more like that. Really think about where you're working. Keep your breathing nice and even. Good, after that last one, I want you to lift up as high as you can and stop. And then give me those eight circles in one direction. Point your toe. Four, squeeze your inner thigh. Think about where you're working. Let it get warm. Stop at the top and reverse other direction. Smile through it, it's not that bad. Four, just like that. Three, little higher. And last one, nice job. Just swing those legs around for me so that you're on the opposite side. Lengthen those legs out. With your hips stacked, with this cute little space right here, belly button pulled in and back. Lift that leg, think of like a really low Japanese tea table. So you're kind of swinging straight forward and straight back without that hip shifting to help you. So usually what our bodies want to do is we want to shift our hip backward when we kick forward because that moves our weight away from that leg. And then instead of our muscles having to really work to hold us up, it's just our weight that's kind of counterbalancing itself. So instead of doing that, think about that hip just really staying stacked and not shifting at all. And remember, if you need, just place your hand right there on the floor. Now keep those kicks really slow so that you can really squeeze through all of those muscles to find sort of that balanced position. Give me three sets forward, squeeze, squeeze, squeeze back. Two little sets like that. Keep the belly button pulled in tight. You're working everything through your abdominals, your back, all the way down into those hips. And then stop right there in the center and super slow and controlled. Lift, don't quite touch the bottom leg. Lift and hover. Good, so remember we're keeping it slow so that we keep the momentum out of it. And we're really thinking about where we're squeezing and working. Also remember on the second side, you might start to feel warm faster on the outside of this leg or it might be on fire because it's pushing into the floor on the first side to support you and stabilize you. But that's what your other leg is doing now. So they're getting even work. One more. Lift it just a little bit and give me those circles for eight. Nice and small circles. Point your toes. Four, three. Stop at the top of that circle and go the opposite direction. Belly button into the spine, kind of lifted through that rib cage. Three, two, one. Bend the knee just a little bit and bring that top leg forward towards the front of your mat or towel and lift your bottom leg. So now we've shifted from adductor to abductor or from outer thigh on the top to inner thigh on the bottom. So squeeze, lift and lower. And seriously for me, Put the mind in the muscle for just a second. Really think about squeezing your inner thigh, lift as high as you can, and release. Squeeze and lift as high as you can, and release. Two more, just like that. And then on your last one, take it all the way down, all the way back up, and give me those eight circles just as high as you can. 
Squeeze your belly button into your spine. Don't let it start to push out. Lift strong and tall through the abs. Stop at the top. Reverse for eight. Breathe through it. Four, three, two, and one. Nice job. Bend those knees in and just take that loop off of your legs so that you can roll yourself all the way over face down on the mat. Good, keeping your loop or towel nearby. If you have that towel, just go ahead and lay it out at the end of your mat. I'm gonna show you with the loop first because I don't have the same range of motion with the loop. Lengthen your hands overhead and sort of get into this Superman position. Tops of the feet are on the floor, palms are on the floor. Go ahead and let your forehead rest on the floor. And once you get in that position, I want you to scoop your belly button up away from the mat and press your lower back as if I had put my hand just above you and you were trying to tap your lower back into my hand. Now without dropping that belly button, without pushing it into the floor, I just want you to lift the hands and feet to hover over the floor and gently set them down. It's just a little millisecond hover. Scoop that belly button off the mat and set it down. You have two like that. The head will probably slightly lift off the floor, but keep everything close. It's really more of a hover than a lift. Good. On this next one, I want you to lift up. Hold the legs nice and still. Pull the belly button in and back. And then start to open your arms back just as far as your body's going to allow. And then bring it right back in. That was further than I should go with the loop. So you'll probably stop right here and bring it right back forward. Just open those arms out. Open through your chest just enough that you feel that stretch through the shoulder blades. And after three or four, set it right back down. Good. So showing you the same move with the towel. Lift to hover and set it down. Lift on the inhale. Release on the exhale. As you inhale and hover over the floor, really think about pressing your lower back up towards the ceiling and pulling your belly button up off the mat. Just give me one more of this. And then lift and hold. And again, we're not moving our legs. We're just circling those arms back and forward overhead. So chest expansion, arm and shoulder squeeze, and back overhead. And that's a flexibility issue. If you get right here and your body's like, that's it. I lift it and I am done. Then just do three or four of this and set them right back down. And then tuck your hands right in by your chest. Tuck your toes under so you can lift yourself up and back without too much pressure on your kneecaps. And then just shift back into a child's pose for me. You'll probably want to point your toes so you can sit your hips nice and close by your heels. Tuck your chin in towards your chest and just let the crown of your head kind of drop forward towards the floor. Maybe use the traction of the mat to walk your arms away slightly. And then bring yourself all the way up to a seated position. I'm gonna be working in a straddle position, but that's not appropriate for everyone's hips and back. So if you prefer to work in an easy seated position, just find a position that works for your legs. If you feel like you might wanna do half of it in a straddle and half not, that's okay too or join me in the straddle position. So start with your arms out. Get your pinkies slightly higher than your thumbs for me and just draw teeny tiny circles right there, squeezing with those arms. Now it feels like someone just grabbed your hands and kind of pulled them out away from you so you made your arms just a little bit longer for me. And then stop at the top and reverse that circle. So not very many, just a few little arm circles right there really lift those elbows higher. So if you bent your elbows, they'd go to the back wall, not down to the floor like little dead chicken wings. Pinkies are up, thumbs are down. Good. I want you to turn your palms up, bring your hands forward till your pinkies touch, and open right out to the side. So it's just a straight arm. Swing forward and open. So there's a nice little work through this that kind of gets from the shoulder up and through those biceps. And kind of is a nice transition from the just shoulder work whenever we're doing the circles into, give me two more, 
of the anticipation. Isn't it fun? Palms up, tuck your elbows in, and then just press straight out like you're serving the heaviest little Thanksgiving turkey dray ever. And you're reaching it straight out to the person who is at the opposite end of the longest cable ever. So really fully straighten the elbows, tuck them all the way behind your ribcage. Really straighten all the way in. So what hopefully you are starting to realize is that you can get some really good arm work with just body weight and without any weights at all. Three more. Two. On this one, you're gonna hold those arms straight out. Keep your elbows as straight as you can. Alternating arms, you're gonna kind of pedal your hands. So it's like you're pulling towards your shoulder and release. And then start to play with the flexibility through that elbow joint. Can you actually tap your shoulder each time? Some people can and some people can't. Just depends on the flexibility through those elbow tendons and what it's gonna allow you to do. Four sets, three sets just like that. See if you can sit a little bit taller, pull your belly button into your spine. And after this last set, bend both elbows in so you have those little 90 degree goal post. And give me a little bitty lift and lower. Both arms lift and lower. If at any point your shoulders or your biceps are like, she's still going, why is she still going? You could switch into alternating one and then the other, or you could shake your arms out for just a little second. And then as soon as you feel ready, jump right back in with us for four, three, two. Good, lengthen those arms out, bring them all the way up overhead Give me that same little tap and lift towards your shoulders, but this time your elbows are trying to point to the ceiling. You're squeezing those biceps just as close to your ears as you can so that it gets super into the triceps, which is this cute little back part of the arm. The part that can keep waving sometimes when we're all finished waving and we don't want it to do that. And lift. Three. You're almost there. Two. And one. Take those same hands, press them forward like you're dragging them down the wall in front of you. Now imagine you just picked up something super heavy and give me a little row and release. So now instead of working the front part of the shoulder through the chest, I want you to be working the back part of the shoulder. And if you have your towel or your loop nearby and it's super easy to grab, you can add just that little extra resistance and pull. Just four like that. Three, so just really working on opening up the entire arm and getting it nice and warm and then release. Take your palms forward and make them touch right in front of you. Squeeze as hard as you can. Fight with your hands, pushing as hard as you can against each other. Good, with your fingertips staying forward, bring that in and give me that same thing. Push, isometric press, hard as you can. Make those arms and chest work for it. Back forward, still pressing, entire arm, hard as you can push, make them shake. And then open nice and wide so there's a stretch through your chest. And give me a little bear hug like you're hugging the largest tree ever, which gives tree hugging a whole new idea. <laughs> and squeeze. But the idea is that your elbows are gonna stay super high and super rounded, and you're gonna kind of scoop in through your chest muscles. For three, here's the joy, no push-ups involved today. Two. One more, and then release that down. Good. Swinging yourself around. I want your hands behind you and I want you to bend your elbows just a little bit and then straighten your elbows as straight as you can. Just a little bit. And straighten right back up. Sorry, inside joke. Bend your elbows. Oh, I know. So if you can name that movie and you're the first one in the comments and you live close enough that I can give you a loop, I'll give you a loop as a prize if you can tell me what movie that was. And I won't do it again because it was terrible and I can't sing. Four like that. Just bend the elbows like you're gonna tap them behind you and straighten three. 
bend and straighten two and one bend halfway and just push your hands into the floor really hard which is going to make it look like a little pulse but it, it's not even really straightening the elbows so much as it's just this push push the floor away from you four three two all the way up nice swinging those legs all the way around so that you're in a tabletop position be sure that your wrist is directly underneath your shoulder puff up by pushing the floor away from you scooping your belly button like there's a little fire on the floor below you and kind of giving it that lower back lift that we were talking about before good i want you to tuck your toes under shift one foot back now don't move anything from your shoulders through your hips as you shift the other foot back and find that kind of perfect plank and then just tap your knees down good so if you keep this sort of scooped in and up through the belly button lower back lifted perfect little knee plank position then when you straighten one knee you should be able to get a nice tightening through the abdominal wall and set it down and just straighten the other knee and set it down so you really shouldn't need any more than that if you're giving me that kegel squeeze if you're really not letting that belly button give in to gravity and just sort of drop down towards the floor that you're keeping everything super tight and you should have already done enough arm work that your arms are getting a nice little burn just from helping to hold you up that if you feel like you need it lift both knees and tap them down three more one knee or both knees tap it down stay where your body needs to work today and tap it down this is the last one tap it down sit back and take a deep breath in that child's pose position nice swing yourself back around into that seated position just a quick little stretch I want you to kind of walk your hands out away from you. Use the traction of the floor, kind of pull them out. And then I want you to circle your neck. So drop your right ear to your right shoulder. Scoop forward, chin to chest. Left ear to left shoulder. And roll right through that back to the right shoulder. Good. So let this be more of a dynamic stretch than a static stretch. So a static stretch would hold still. And this dynamic stretch is just going to keep moving nice and slow and smooth from one side through towards the chest to the other side one more in each direction and then release that good interlace your fingers pressing your palms forward towards the wall in front of you chin to your chest lift the hands up nice stretch through the arms tall as you can reach hands behind the head open the elbows wide as you press your head into your hands open through your chest and then tuck your elbows in pull your chin in towards your chest little back stretch sitting up nice and tall and release that out good little shoulder stretch just for one deep inhale and exhale Good, swing that same arm all the way behind you to stretch through the front of the shoulder. Little tricep stretch, placing that hand behind your head or towards your shoulder blade. And maybe you can grab onto it with the opposite hand and lean a little bit. Nice, same hand, right hand, bring it forward. Tuck this left hand up underneath it for a little um, deepen stretch. Oh my goodness, I totally forgot the name. Or you can wrap your hands one more time and place your palms together, just depending on what works for you. Lift those hands up, look towards the ceiling, feel that sort of pull through the shoulder blades in the back. And then on your exhale, tuck your elbows in towards your chest or rib cage, chin tucks in. Nice long stretch through the shoulders and arms. And release that switch over to the other side. Pull the arm across for shoulder stretch, just one deep inhale and exhale so again kind of dynamic stretching today swinging it back and over tucking your hand behind your head 
Grab onto that elbow if you want and maybe lean away slightly. Same arm, so bring that left arm around and scoop your right arm up underneath it. Remember the back of the hands can be together or you can twist them one more time, placing your palms together. Lift up and look up. So extend through the front of the body by really lifting through your chin. And then tuck your chin in towards your chest. Really pull those arms forward. And lift right back up and extend that out. Interlacing your fingers behind your back. Press your palms down towards the floor. Sit up just a little bit taller, inhale. And exhale, release that. Walking your hands forward. And then walk your hands back in. Grab onto one knee and twist and look as far behind you as you can. And quick release, other side. Twist just as far as your back's going to allow today. And then right there, switch for me and put the opposite leg in front. Do all three of those again, that little walking forward for one breath and walking the hands in. Little back twist for one breath. And pretty quick release. Twist the other direction. And pretty quick release. And then go ahead and swing those legs around so that you are in a tabletop position. Exhale into cat. If your body likes it, if it feels good, you can shift your hips backwards a little bit into cat. And then stopping in the center, Drop that rib cage towards the floor and really look up towards the ceiling, stretching through the front of the body. Maybe leaning forward a little bit, getting an extra stretch in your forearms. And then stop in center. Exhale into cat. Lean back. Stop in the center. Drop into cow with a teeny tiny leap forward. And up. Right there, just tuck your toes under. Lift your hips up into downward facing dog. If your heels are touching the floor, just sort of give a little lift through your bottom towards the ceiling. But if your heels are not quite touching the floor, then kind of pedal your feet for me and give me that slight bend in one knee as you press the opposite heel towards the floor and then switch other side to the floor and switch. One more on each side. And then with this nice slight bend in both knees, just walk your feet in towards your hands and hang right there in a forward fold for me. In that forward fold, you have a lot of options. You can grab onto your legs and just give a little pull. You can wrap your hands around your elbows and let the weight of the upper body kind of pull towards the floor. Or you can just hang with your hands just draping right in front of your legs. Drive your heels down for me as you sort of lift through your tailbone towards the ceiling. And then on your next exhale, go ahead and tuck your chin in towards your chest and roll all the way up to seated. Standing. Good, today for our side stretch, I just want your hands to stay right down by your hips. I want you to lean as far as you can to one side, just reaching down the outside of that leg towards your knee. And lift up and over. And same thing, lean as far as your body's going to allow the other side feeling that stretch through the obliques. Right back to the first side. Pretty much it's just for one deep breath. So nice deep inhale. And exhale. For a quad stretch, if you like, you need to grab onto a wall or a chair, get near something. Tucking your heel in nice and close to your bottom. Keeping your knees lined up as much as possible and maybe even pressing that hip forward just a little bit. Your hips can go back just a little bit. Now I'll know how far you watch through the video if you answer because you want to win a loop. And switch right over to the other side. Tucking your heel in towards your bottom. Knees close. Shift those hips forward. Grabbing onto a wall. If you were in class, I would say, or a neighbor, unless they have really bad balance, in which case don't grab them. 
And then just like we did at the very beginning of class, I want you to shift back into that lunge position, try to lock your heel down, bend and shift your weight forward. See if you feel a little less tightness in that calf after all the work that you did. Lift up and grab and lean away from that back leg or that hip of the back leg. And come up and lean back just a little bit, looking towards the ceiling. And step it in, last one. Switch sides, drive that heel in and down. Sorry. Try to lock the heel down to the floor as you shift your weight into the front leg, maybe even lean towards it. Then lift up, grab the opposite, or grab the left hand. Pull away from the left hip, just depends on which foot's back for you. Lift into the center, lean back just a little bit. Now I know I say that way too much. <laughs> and step in. One deep breath on your exhale. Imagine you're dragging your hands against the wall behind you. And then before you go today, just do a little assessment for me. Feel where the weight is evenly placed between your feet. Get just a soft bend in your knees to protect your back and all of your joints. Kind of stack your hips directly over your heels. Rib cages directly over the hips. Kind of roll those shoulders up and back and kind of open through your chest. Give me that pretty tall posture that you worked so hard for throughout class. And try not to like start texting and then typing on the computer and then pushing a shopping cart and by the time you eat lunch, you're like, oh my goodness. But really keep that open, tall posture throughout the day. You guys are beautiful and I so appreciate you watching these videos. So if you liked it, please give me a thumbs up. And feel free to subscribe to my channel if you want to see more. And I hope that you have a beautiful day.